What is going on everybody? YouTube.com slash Centix here for another tutorial for Bucky in the new Boston. Today what we're going to be doing is giving ourselves a bit of an intro to OpenGL uh, and using PyOpenGL so we can use OpenGL with Python. So to get, uh, first of all to do this, you're going to need PyOpenGL. So to get that, uh, bring over OpenGL here. Um, so this is the official PyOpenGL website. And then here, uh, it just basically says that you can use this with a bunch of GUI libraries with Python, including, and then all of these. Um, and we're going to be using it with Pygame. So uh, we have that. We know that um, that's all set. We have Python 3.3, hopefully. And uh, I'm actually on Python 3.4, and it works, so that's good. So to get it, uh, come down here to the downloading and inst installing it. We want just simple pi open GL. Go ahead and click on that. And then basically these are your standard bindings. If you're on Windows, you, you know, either you can install this uh, here and use the typical sub.py installation. If you're on Windows, however, you can use this, which is uh, just the uh, Windows installers. Um, and they basically have the Windows installers for all of your versions of Python and different versions of pi open GL. Be careful and don't click on the accelerate one unless you want accelerate, but you're gonna need PyOpenGL first. So for you, if you're on 64-bit, you would want this one. And if you're on a 32-bit, you would want this one. So once you have those, you should be able to uh, do the following. You should be able to say um, from OpenGL.GL import asterisk. And when you hit save and run, you'll wait for it, apparently forever. And you shouldn't have an error. If you have an error, you need to go back to the installation and figure out what the heck happened. So, uh, with that, let me go ahead and minimize this and basically all this stuff. And um, we'll just we'll leave that line here. So, um, so as I explained in the previous video, OpenGL is like a 3D graphics mm, engine, so to speak. So, what it's going to allow us to do is make both 2D but also 3D code and do it very efficiently. And what OpenGL does for us too is it utilizes a lot of things that you probably have no idea about, um, like the need to match your uh, monitor's refresh rate and all this nastiness. So, so OpenGL is definitely a very useful, um, a useful engine. So anyway, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do now is, we're, if you haven't noticed, we're just going to write a new script. So this is going to have nothing to do with the previous scripts that we've written. Um, so save those if you want, and then start clean. And let's go ahead and get started. So we're using this with Pygame, so we're going to go ahead and import uh, Pygame. And then we're also going to do from Pygame.locals import basically everything. This just allows us to use all of the typical Pygame uh, commands uh, without having to type Pygame dot. Then we have uh, from OpenGL dot GL import everything. And basically what this is, is this is just your standard OpenGL functions. So if you are not familiar with typical OpenGL, um, let's see, we go to uh, simple google.com here and just type in OpenGL documentation uh, and then head over here and this has all the documentation you could possibly want. And the other thing that you can do is, um, for example, um, I guess I'll show you when we get there. But basically, if you're not sure what like a certain function might do, you can just Google that function, and you'll find yourself on the OpenGL uh, documentation page, and it tells you exactly what that function does. So anyway, uh, from OpenGL.gl, import everything. Again, just your typical OpenGL functions. And then uh, we're also going to do from open uh, dot opengl dot glu mind the caps import everything, and this is more advanced opengl functions, especially like some of the newer ones you'll find are going on here. Um, anyway, oh, and then also I just should mention opengl is, I believe, completely backwards compatible. So everything that used to work still works. Um, it just might not be the best or the industry standard. Um, actually, it probably is the industry standard. Since it is fully backwards compatible, a lot of people don't move forward. Um, but with OpenGL, um, you'll find that there are a lot of outdated things, like some things that used to be required, but they're not required anymore. Uh, and then there's also like some things that are just like there almost as like standard or something. 
And then there's some things that are new that you can do that you probably don't understand because like if you knew the old way that OpenGL worked and you looked at the new way, you'd be like, well, I don't even understand. And then if you're taught the new way, you're probably looking at the old legacy OpenGL and you're like, what is the purpose? You know, that kind of stuff. So just keep that in mind that if you're looking at examples of OpenGL, just understand that that might be really old stuff and you might be trying to compare it to like what you know how to do today. Uh, even in my code that I'm going to show you here, especially depending on when you're watching this, um, some of this is legacy, some of this is newer stuff, and so you just have to kind of keep this in mind. So that's that. Now, with OpenGL, basically what you do is you start, you just specify X, Y, Z, and OpenGL takes the rest, uh, takes the reins basically from there. Uh, so first, we're going to keep it really simple, and you want to define first your vertices. So your vertices are like your nodes, like the little corners of everything. You define those, then you specify to OpenGL like, hey, like this is the type of object I want you to display. In our case, it'll be lines. So draw lines from all of the vertices. And then when we're all done, we'll render up and it'll be a, a nice looking cube. And we'll see that we can do all kinds of things. We can change our perspective of the cube and everything is like near perfect. So, um, so anyways, you want to define your vertices next. So um, we'll go ahead and do that in the next video since that's kind of a, a longer topic as well. But it's kind of like the nodes that we defined, but a little, little more complex. So anyways, uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.